That's the update on gold. Now I'm going to show you, I'm switching now to a positive, and I'm sorry to be so passionate, but when you're dealing with madness and the madness that pervades this world and the fact that, that we have people in the military that still today madly, insanely follow the parasites in the belief that the crocodile, the alligator, will eat them last. There's no way to reason with that madness. So I'm going to talk about Great Ritz now. Uh, before we do that, actually, I promised that I would talk to you about life-born records and death-born records. So I'm going to cover that first. Okay. If you look under Article 42, life-born records and 43, death-born records, then what I want to show you is uh, some quick, quick refinements because this has been, I, I understand for a lot of you, uh, not clear as to how you generate a life-born record for, say, your departed grandfather or people that have died uh, previously, uh, and, and how, do we, how do we issue and what do we issue? So I'm just going to read the first part of these two. I'm looking at Article 42, just the first part of, of, uh, of this, and uh, 42.1. So all members of one heaven living on or after the day of divine agreement and understanding, Roman time being Monday the 21st of December 2009, have the absolute right to request a valid abstract of their life-born record. Because a life-born record is based on the calculation of your number on your born date. Okay? Now, the key is this day, 21st of December, 2009. If we move forward to the next one, 43, Article 43, death-born record, which I know sounds like a paradox. It sounds strange. <clears throat> Let's look at the top of it. All members of one heaven who have died in flesh before that day, before the day of agreement understanding, being that Roman date, Monday the 21st of December, 2009, have the absolute right to request a valid abstract of their death-born record. Why? Because a death-born record is calculated on the day you die, not on the day you were born. And it explains there, the name death-born record signifies that while the flesh is dead, by divine compassion, all spirits, all souls are granted permanent and irrevocable membership to heaven, hence are born again. So for your parents if they've departed or brothers and sisters have departed or children that may have died before you or friends or neighbours or grandparents we will be making available the, the fact that they too have an absolute right to be known as members of one heaven and that you may generate a death born record to prove that they are members of one heaven and I'm sorry this has taken a while to get ready but it it's an important element. Remember, when you do this, you are making clear that your parents, your, your departed brother or sister or, or children, friends, neighbours, grandparents, ancestors, cannot be claimed by these parasites and pirates and their constant bonding and use in their products and stealing that energy, even in death, trying to steal that energy. So I hope over time people, when they do have time, will uh, input that information in and, and, get, and obtain those at their, at their leisure. And of course, when someone's departed, they don't need an email address. So the information you put in will be vastly simpler than the current system. And by the way, thank you for all of you who have been registering. I know it's been uh, some, some problematic. Uh, and for those that have encountered problems, I've tried best to help there. Uh, it is new. These, these systems are new. And so thank you for your patience. Uh, and I hope that you know, all of you have, have been able to work through them. And if you haven't, uh, as I said, those that are still waiting for that, I will certainly come back to you straight away. And if you do encounter a problem, please feel free to let us know the problem. Now, Great Ritz. I promised about Great Ritz last week, and it's time to cover Great Ritz. And in the, let's say, in the 15 minutes we have left, uh, let me have a chance to go through these with you. And thank you all for your uh, patience tonight. Uh, so let's get through this bit, and then I look forward to your questions. Now, if you go to the home page, you'll see Great Writs of Justice there, the box there. And if you click on that link, 
I'm going to ask you to scroll down, way down to 112.12. When you scroll down to 112.12, you'll see that there are a list of links that are linked. A list of links that are linked, sorry. You'll see, anyway, a list of links. I want you to click on any one of those. It doesn't matter which one it is. And what will happen is you will download a working version of the writ component of a divine writ. So please feel free to, to do that. And uh, I'll let you for a moment uh, download it. And then I'm going to call it up and, and go through with you uh, the key elements that go with it. The other thing that uh, is important with a great writ, there are a couple of other things that we've done with great writs that, that are important. Uh, and we did say last time, and there was an update that looked at there being an issue of three spiritual members being associated with it. In honesty, that really depreciates from the importance of the three living members. And so there's been a number of simplifications. So I'm going to ask you to read those. But given the time, I'm not going to go through the instructions now other than give a chance now to talk about the structure of a writ. And then next week, we'll be going through the uh, deed of facts and interrogatories that go with the writ and the consequences if a writ is not followed. So I'm just going to call up here on my files a divine writ. And I'm going to look at the writ of uh, mandamus. As I said, they're all the same format. I'll, I'll explain. The reason that the format of all these writs are the same is that the difference of the writ is contained in the deed of facts and interrogatories, which is why I need another week to be able to refine those for you in order to show those for you. But let's have a look at the key differences here of a great writ compared to an ecclesiastical deed. So from the top, the first thing you'll see, and I've put these in blue just to show you know, what they look like in blue. But at the top, the first thing you'll see is the words ex officio per curium divina, which, is diff uh, which actually should simply say ex officio curium divina. So the word per should go, and that'll, I'll fix it up. It should actually just read ex officio curium divina, not per curium divina. And the reason for that is it should be by virtue of the office of the divine curia. In other words, with three members coming together, they actually represent a tribunal. They represent the court. They are the court now. Not simply for the court, they are the court. Hence, ex officio curium divina. Right, moving through. So we have the name of the writ, in this case, Magnus Ritus Mandamus. And let me read this out and then I'll explain. Hear ye, see ye, know ye. We, the three divine immortal spirits expressed in trust to the circumscribed living flesh known as, first name and surname of the first, the second, first name and surname of the third, collectively as the highest sacred trinity. So I'll stop there and I'll go back through that. So hear ye, see ye, know ye. Writs were announced. Hear ye, hear ye. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Whoever has eyes, let them see. I mean, that was a, that was a pronouncement back when writs were at the time of Akhenaten, thousands of years ago. So there's always been a tradition to call to attention. Hear ye, see ye, know ye. Well, we, the three divine immortal spirits, very similar to a, in fact, identical to a ecclesiastical deep pole, expressed in trust to the circumscribed, so sacred, living flesh, and then the names, one, two, three. But this is different. Collectively, as the highest sacred trinity. Now, some of you may be concerned that we're making such a claim, but the truth is that three of you are sealing in blood as divine spiritual beings. You are the manifestation of the divine trinity. You are. That's not a usurpation. That is not a blasphemy. It is a fact. You are. Give, I give life and personality to this sacred irrevocable writ through our three living seals in blood, this is different now, as the highest perfected notice from the highest tribunal. Now, what do we mean by perfected notice? If you think about giving a notice with a, with a notarization, it is to prove uh, that it has got witnesses of high standing, that it's been witnessed by 
someone of high standing. Because we have three blood seals, we have three divine immortal spirits, we have three flesh beings, you are perfecting a notice. You don't need it notarized. You don't. It's a perfected notice in itself. From the highest tribunal, we explain that, to our member and to all whom are present witnesses and shall be in the future. Now, first thing is our member. We're writing to President Barack Obama as a member or the US Attorney General as a member, not some holder of some office of some strange society. They are a member of heaven, of one heaven. And importantly, we're not writing to them in private and then breaching that right. If, so, if, you, if you receive an email from the private, then if you were to publish that, you would be in dishonour because you were not given permission. Here we're saying this is both a private and a public notice to them, our member and to all who are present witnesses. Okay, moving forward. Number one. Let it be known that trust recipient number, blah, 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 also known by the form of name, President Barack Hussein Obama, is a full member of one heaven by virtue of their birth and living flesh as proven by their live-born record annexed hereto in full. Therefore, should the flesh of the member deny their membership, the flesh of the member shall declare before all heaven and earth its incompetence and ineligibility to hold any office or make any lawful decision. Now, this is crucial. This is one of the crucial elements of a great writ. We're writing to them as a member. We're proving with their live-born record. Now, if they deny they are a member, if they deny their live-born record, automatically, by canon law and by logic, automatically they declare themselves incompetent. By any rational person, they declare themselves incompetent. Two, let it be known that trust recipient number, blah, 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 has been invested into the high office of President of the United States of America, thus claiming ecclesiastical authority and power from heaven to be known by such high office. Therefore, should the flesh of the member dishonour this sacred irrevocable writ, the flesh of the member shall declare before all heaven and earth they deny the very source of power by which their office exists and therefore shall prove for a second time their incompetence and ineligibility to hold any office or make any lawful decision. Now, you can't have it both ways. If you are holding an office, an office is an ecclesiastical position. Why? What is an office? An office is a circumscribed space, a chapel, a temple, a sanctuary, which is what is around you when you issue a deed or a, or a, a temple space. It is, it is a, an office is a physical, sacred space. And therefore, by ecclesiastical claim from heaven, all offices exist and all power to those offices exist. So if you deny this notice from heaven, then you are denying the source, the same source that gives you power. Can't have it both ways. Now, if that seems like a paradox, it is. It is the ultimate paradox. And what is the ultimate paradox? If you see the ultimate paradox, then you are seeing the true personality of the divine creator. And what do I mean by that? Well, you were promised one day that we would see a new name, a name that would make sense of the paradox of the world. And, and you've been given that name. Unique, one, collective, many, awareness. How can something be unique and collective at the same time? Only awareness can be unique and collective at the same time. Hence, UCA, unique collective awareness, is a more perfected name for the divine creator. And if one is wishing to describe the mind and the thoughts and the hopes and the dreams and the knowledge of the unique collective awareness of the new name of the divine, one would use the building blocks of meaning of semantic, which we call dia, the building blocks of ideas, dias. And if you put 
UCA and DIA together, you get